Well, um, Charlotte, uh, thank you for making some time for us. No, first thank of you. Um, I was wondering, since you've recorded your early de demos uh, yourself uh, at home uh, with the band, um, how many other bands uh, did you record uh, there as well? Um, it's actually Billy, who's the, the guy mm -hmm. who's very good at recording, and he produced um, our, um, our demos for our third album as well, which is why there's a deluxe mm -hmm. edition with his demos on there too. Um, he did quite a few bands, sort of local bands, um, um, back at home. I know he's it's something he's looking to do more of now as okay. well. You know, there's still some bands that, that are quite well known now that, that he has produced? Um, they do, they're still playing. Mm -hmm. um, probably not played over here at all, but mm -hmm. they, they still play around London and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about demos, um, how big is the difference between uh, some of the demos uh, that were recorded for this new album and uh, and, and the, the, the final versions that are on the album? I think in terms of the actual song itself, um, not much really changed between the demo um, and, the, and, and the album version. And we actually used the demo recordings as, as like the bass tracks when we were recording. So Josh had um, um, Billy's guitar and my bass in, in his um, headphones when he was recording drums for the album. So we kind of kept things pretty much the same. A few changes here and there, a few lyric changes, a few extra harmonies, things like that. Um, then I guess the main difference is Stephen Street's production. It's mm. just, you know, he's one of the best producers mm. in Britain, so yeah. it's great to work with him. How did you stumble that on, upon him? Um, well, we, we're big fans of his work with, uh, with Blur, um, The Cranberries, Kaiser Chiefs, such a long list of amazing bands he's worked with. Um, and we, um, when we were recording the demos, the albums, sort of hearing how the songs were sounding, sort of decided that his sound would be perfect if we were lucky enough that he'd want to work with us. Mm -hmm. So. We sent him off our demos and he really liked the songs, which was just amazing for us. Um, and then he said, yes, let, let's do it. And then we recorded with him. It sounds a little bit like, like the, the story of your career, career so far. Like uh, also you sent some very early demos to, uh, uh, what's his name again? My Michael Evers from Westenbury. Yeah, yeah. And that was how uh, we got um, our first sort of kind of big break, I guess. Mm. Um, we sent a um, demo to Michael Evis um, to into this competition to play at uh, Glastonbury and then we won that and then got to play at Glastonbury. Um, we, we have been very lucky throughout our career. Um, Butch Vig as well, getting to work with him. It, that was the same sort of thing with Stephen Street. We sent him some demos of some songs and he liked them and wanted to mm. work with us. And Butch Vig's like a dream producer. It's like who every band would want to work with. So we mm. feel very lucky to have had the opportunity. Yeah. So now we see all the, the, the positive stories of you and your band. But I can imagine that it isn't always that easy as it seems for, for us as uh, outstanders, or does it...? Oh, there's uh, always ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I think for us one of the, the, the most difficult things was when Billy had nodules on his vocal cords and um, had to have a big operation and mm -hmm. it was, there was a possibility that he may never sing again and he just he couldn't talk for... I can't remember how long it was, it was quite a few weeks, he couldn't talk, clear his voice or anything and then we were just waiting throughout that time and they wouldn't to see if he would be okay, it was, it was very difficult. Um, I think we just all tried to keep positive and mm -hmm. yeah, there's always ups and downs. I think as well, it kind of feels like it could end at any moment. That's the way it is with this business. Like things can change so quickly. Hmm. Was it really, uh, uh, was the question really that big that he, there was a possibility that, possibility that he never could sing anything? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the operation was quite risky. Mm -hmm. It's something they do as a last resort, but it just got that bad that he mm -hmm. couldn't sing anymore. So they decided to go ahead with the operation. But some people have had that operation in the past and their voices have completely changed and they can't sing in the same way or they can't sing at all. Or, so it was, it was quite a risky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you d discuss it with each other uh, if he should take the surgery or it wasn't, was there no option? Yeah, there was many, many months of going mm -hmm. back and forth to doctors, second mm -hmm. opinions and sort of deciding what's the best course of action. Tried first of all um, kind of a less drastic route and just seeing if it would clear up on its own but it got like the, the, the blisters on his voice were quite big by that point and that it, it wasn't going to go away, they were just rest alone, they needed mm -hmm. to be removed. So. Very dramatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you listen back to the earlier work and now maybe the new work, is there is there a difference in the voice or is is there isn't there at all? I think there is, but I think that's probably more to do with age more than anything else. I think we listen back to Young Fraternity and when we recorded the album we were 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old and we both think we sound very young on that record and sound a bit more mature on all or nothing. And I think now sort of I know personally I'm sort of finding my voice a lot more. Um, mm. I didn't really know what I was doing on Young Fraternity, to be honest. And now I kind of know, know a bit more about how to sing and how my voice sounds good and stuff. Mm.